In the last two videos, we showed a few different ways to quantify how robust a system is to model and plant uncertainty by looking at how much input and output variation it can handle before it no longer meets requirements. We looked at how varying the input affected the stability of the system, and we looked at the same by varying the output, and then we looked at varying the input and the output at the same time. Now in this video, rather than apply variation to the model as a whole, we're going to apply it to the individual parameters within the model to determine how robust the system is to parameter uncertainty. I think you're going to find that it's a really natural way to think about uncertainty in your system, so I hope you stick around for it. I'm Brian, and welcome to a MATLAB Tech Talk. To demonstrate the power of model parameter uncertainty, let's look at how we might go about controlling a two cart and spring system. The idea here is that we can adjust the force applied to the handle of the first cart. This is the input into the system. And the goal is to move the second cart over to the set point. Now there's a lot of ways to solve this problem, but I want to show what a solution might look like. The red line indicated the direction and magnitude of the input force. And I don't know if you caught that, so let's watch it one more time, and you can see how the force is applied to get the second cart to stop right at the set point. Now, I already said that there's a lot of ways to solve this problem, but let me show you how I approached it. We can build a linear model of the system dynamics using first principles. We start with the equations of motion, and then define the four state variables. I'm using cart 1, position and velocity, and cart 2, position and velocity. Then we use these state variables to rewrite the equations of motion in state form, and then repackage it into state space matrices. You can pause the video here if you want to study this in more detail, but the main takeaway is that we have a simple mathematical model of this system in the form of the A, B, C, and D matrices. Now we can use this model to develop a feedback control system that will drive the position of the second cart to the set point. I'm going to use full state feedback for the controller, and I'm going to choose the gains using LQR. So let's go over to MATLAB and see how this is done. By the way, I'm very loosely following the MathWorks example, building and manipulating uncertain models, and I've left a link to it in the description if you want to try something similar on your own. All right, for the first part of this live script, it's just a graphic reminding you of the problem and showing a cleaner version of the state space model that we just derived. I'm going to arbitrarily set the cart masses and the spring constant to 1, and then build the state space model with the ss command. So g is the model of the open loop plant. It has one input, which is force, and it has four outputs, each of the four states in our system. And with this model, developing the LQR controller is pretty trivial. I define the Q in R matrices, and then solve for the full state feedback gains with the LQR command. And if you want to know more about this, definitely check out the MATLAB Tech Talk video on LQR. Link is below. Okay, now we can get the closed loop system model with the feedback command, and our control system design is complete. We can test it and see how it responds to, say, a step command. Here, I'm telling the system to drive both cart positions to the right by one unit. And check this out. After about eight seconds, the positions of both carts have settled at one. And you can tell it's settled since the velocities of both carts go to zero. So the controller works. But I want to remind you what we just did. We developed a model of the hardware to calculate what the controller should be. But should we expect this controller to work on the real hardware? Well, if the model perfectly matches the hardware, then yeah, for sure it'll work. But if the model doesn't perfectly represent the hardware, or if the hardware varies because it changes over time, or there's hardware defects or large manufacturing tolerances, then we don't know yet if the controller is going to work with these variations. And like we talked about, this is where the idea of disk margin is helpful. I can check the input-output disk margin for this system and see that at the critical frequency of 1.7 radians per second, the inputs and outputs in the real system can have a gain that varies between 0.76 and 1.3 of what the model claims, or phase that varies plus or minus 15 degrees. If the real variation in the system is between these values, then the controller that we developed with the model will still work. 
So this is how we quantified robustness in the last video, and it's a very useful way to determine margin. But in some cases, it's not straightforward to relate gain and phase margin back to something physical. Like, it's hard to quickly see how a variation in spring constant affects the phase, or the gain of the whole system. For example, what if we buy a bunch of springs, because we're building a hundred of these devices, and we know every single spring will have a slightly different constant. The question is, how far out of spec could the spring constant be before we want to reject it prior to installing it into the system? It's not instantly obvious looking at the disk gain and phase margin. So in addition to disk margin, let's approach this problem by asking this question. How much variation in the spring constant and the cart masses can our system handle before instability occurs? A brute force way to answer this is to build hundreds of models, each with slight variations on M1, M2, and K, and then simulate them all and see which systems go unstable. This is a Monte Carlo approach to the problem. You specify how the parameters can vary, and then run a bunch of simulations to see how it performs. The problem with a Monte Carlo approach is that you're only testing a finite number of cases within a continuous parameter space and a random distribution of test cases may miss a combination that produces an unstable system. Now we can improve the odds by increasing the number of cases, or instead we can check robustness to parameter uncertainty in a more deterministic way using an uncertain parameter model in MATLAB. Now the code here is very similar to what we did earlier. We're going to build the state space equations using the parameters K, M1, and M2 again, except this time we're defining them as uncertain real parameters. I've arbitrarily said that K can vary 30%, M1 10%, and M2 20%. And with the SS command, we can generate an uncertain continuous time state space model, which I've called GUNC. And using this, we can calculate the uncertain closed loop system with the feedback command, exactly like we did before, so everything is pretty much the same, except for this. We can check the robust stability margins for the uncertain system with the robestab command. This command is deterministically solving for the parameter combinations that cause instability, and then returning those results. It's explicitly looking for the worst case. So it's similar to a Monte Carlo approach in that we're looking across the entire parameter space, except that we have guarantees that we're not missing anything due to random selection. And it says that our system is robustly stable for the modeled uncertainty. And it turns out we can actually tolerate 2.3 times the parameter uncertainty that we are expecting. So instead of variations of 30%, 10%, and 20%, we actually will still have a stable system if the spring constant varies by up to 69%, M1 by 23%, and M2 by 46%. And this makes sense because LQR by itself produces a pretty robust control system. This is not the case if it's paired with a Kalman filter, but that's a different story. We can look at the smallest parameter combination that destabilizes the system by looking at WCU. If our real hardware has the following spring constant and masses, then we're in trouble. Now, here's something I think is super cool. We can plot things like the step response for an uncertain system model. Here's the same step response I ran earlier, but now it shows the effects that parameter variation has on it. And it does this by plotting 25 random systems within the parameter bounds that we set. And we can see that all 25 of these are stable, as expected. So it's sort of like a Monte Carlo approach where we verify stability by looking at a finite number of cases. But check this out. Just to show you that we can miss things with a Monte Carlo approach, let me go back up and change the expected variation to 75, 30, and 50%. Now we already know that some combination of parameters within this amount of uncertainty is going to produce an unstable system. And in fact, the Robestab command tells us this much. We're not robustly stable, and we can tolerate only 89% of the modeled uncertainty. So clearly this isn't a design we'd be happy with if the parameters truly vary this much. However, if we check the step response where 25 random systems were visualized, 
we might be tempted to claim that we're okay, since none of these plotted combinations create anything that looks unstable. This is equivalent to running 25 cases in a Monte Carlo approach and then erroneously claiming success. Let me show you what I mean. I said that WCU is the smallest parameter variation that will destabilize the system. So let's assume that we built a system that has this K and M1 value, but with an M2 value 5% outside of the minimum acceptable variation. In this case, M2 would be 5% lighter than the lowest stable mass of 0.55 kilograms. This combination is still within the parameter uncertainty that we specified above, and if we relied on the 25 case Monte Carlo, then we'd expect that this would be okay. But this shouldn't come as a surprise to you, but it's not going to be okay, and we can verify this by plotting its step response. I'm going to extend the simulation time to 100 seconds because it'll highlight the difference between what the 25 cases is telling us and the reality of the situation. And there it is. Now, I definitely cherry-picked this case for the video, and in reality we wouldn't just run 25 Monte Carlo cases, we'd run hundreds or thousands and increase our odds of covering the entire parameter space. But hopefully with this example you can see how a deterministic approach like we have with an uncertain system model is more reliable for determining robustness to parameter uncertainty than a statistical approach. All right, that's where I'm gonna leave this video. I hope you can see the value in quantifying parameter uncertainty and using it to assess how robust your system is to parameter variation. And there's no reason why you have to choose this method over disk margin or classical gain and phase margin. You could look at all of them. Each tell you something different about how your system handles variation, and all of this knowledge will just give you a better sense of how robust your system is. In fact, you can even combine methods. For example, you can add gain and phase uncertainty to the whole system using the umargin command, and then check how robust the system is to parameter variations. And this method is helpful if you want to see how robust your system is to unmodeled dynamics, like the fact that we didn't model the nonlinearities of the spring. And I've left a link to an example that you can walk through if you're interested in learning how to quantify the uncertainty that comes from unmodeled dynamics. All right, we've spent a lot of time in this series talking about determining if our system is robust. In the next video, we're gonna look at ways to design your controller from the start with robustness in mind. So if you don't wanna miss that or any other future Tech Talk videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna check out my channel, Control System Lectures, I cover more control theory topics there as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.